Marvel's Avengers is the newest hero looter to hit the gaming world, and with it comes an amazing story that must be experienced by any Marvel fan. But if you truly want to experience everything the game has to offer, you'll want to join the Avengers Initiative and make it to the end game, where unique cosmetic rewards and legendary gear await by completing new challenging missions, turning you into the ultimate unique superhero. In today's video, I'm going to cover 4 tips that will make your quest to the max power level of 150 as easy and pain free as possible. You'll want to stick around until the end to find out all you need to know. If you've clicked on this video, you're in the right place for all the latest and greatest Avengers game news, guides and gameplay. So to stay up to date with all the latest right here, then hit that subscribe button. Whilst you're there, give us a rating down below too. Each like equals one legendary piece of gear from your next shield chest. But without any further delay, let's get into it. Alright, Marvel's Avengers is a loot based game, meaning the whole aim of the game is acquiring loot to kit out your heroes and personalise them to play your own way. That being said, loot isn't your friend. It may look all shiny and pretty, some of it may even be purple or yellow with great perks. Delete it. Delete all of it. Whether you're doing the campaign or dipping your tones into the multiplayer, don't get attached to your gear. During the early stages of the game, your power and gear level mean more than the actual stats or perk within it. Aside from maybe the one or two pieces that will drop with 5 star perks dealing elemental damage or have unique hero specific perks which will do just fine for you if you're underleveled for certain missions or drop zones. However, you'll be getting new higher power gear so often that it'll just become irrelevant nearly immediately. Which brings me on to my next tip. Don't power boost any gear whatsoever. Mainly for the same reasons as previous one, but more so because power boosting your gear costs resources, some of which like plasma can be extremely rare and hard to come by. Wasting these precious resources on low level gear could severely impact your leveling as you head towards the power cap which is set at 130 for gear drops. Once at 130 power level, you'll need a considerable amount of resources to power boost your legendary and epic gear up to their 140 power cap, and you'll also need a lot of an even rarer resource, Uru, to power boost your artifact for a bonus 10 levels, getting you to the holy grail of the power cap at 150. Save those resources and don't power boost until you're further into the end game where stats, gear, perks and builds are going to be a necessity, especially for when the aim secret lab and mega hives go live. Once you've progressed through the first opening missions of the campaign, you'll gain access to the faction vendors in the two main outposts on the Crimea and in the Ant Hill. This will allow you to now pick up bounties from them which reset daily. Make sure to pick up these from the vendor every single day as ranking up each vendor especially the shield faction will grant you further rewards in the form of gear and resources. These bounties are generally mundane tasks such as defeating certain enemy types or using certain abilities and are very easy to blend into your gameplay. Not only that but as you hit the end game power levels you'll be able to purchase select gear from the vendor in the form of legendary and epic variants. This will allow you to take out some of the RNG and the luck of grinding out war zones and missions for that rare gear drop and enables you to target certain builds more easily. Now we're on to the final tip, but before we get there, remember if you found these tips helpful, press that like button and support the channel. Lastly, there's plenty of mission types in the game, but there's one that is excellent in terms of XP gain for the amount of time spent completing it. Drop zones are the ultimate for power per hour. These missions are short and sweet and pit you in a small area with an objective to complete such as holding down a zone for a period of time. They are generally super easy and quick to complete, but the real cherry on top is the fact that you can drop the difficulty level and still be awarded the same amount of XP as you would for a higher difficulty. That is because difficulty in Avengers only limits the amount, level and type of gear and reward you get for successfully completing the mission. But as you just want XP, you want to finish this mission as quickly as possible, so dropping it to Challenger 1 will maximise your hero and power level gains. 
Obviously, you can drop the power level for other missions too and get similar effects, but honestly, drop zones are hands down the best for levelling up efficiently. That's it, you are now armed and ready with the knowledge to help you become Earth's mightiest hero. With the high level endgame content due, you'll need the best gear and builds possible, and if you can get to the higher levels quickly using this guide, it'll give you the best shot of finishing the hives and secret lab when they are released. Comment down below if you think I missed anything that may help a fellow Avenger out. Also, if you're looking for a place to team up with fellow players, check out my Discord link below. It's pretty new and fresh, but it's set up to go with a community hub and LFG pages. If you're new here and haven't subscribed already, do the thing. I'm planning on bringing plenty of guides and builds for this game and I'd love to see you here more often. That's it for this one though, so on that and as always, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.